All right. So I think it's fair to say that I get a fair amount of questions about equipment, what to use, um, why do you use certain things, and in this video, I'm going to explain all of this stuff to you as thoroughly as I can. So, oh, and by the way, where to get a lot of this equipment. So, everybody has their resources on what they use, what, what company they use, or they may have a friend that makes collars or leashes or, you know, whatever the case may be. So you can pretty much get these um, quality collars, leashes, harnesses from just about anywhere. Um, as long as it's quality, hey, it's it's perfectly fine. It does like one brand does one brand doesn't outdo the next brand. In some cases, it does. But um, where I get most of my stuff from is O'Brien Supply. A lot of times, I get the leashes, the collars, the um, Harnesses, a lot of the horn, different harnesses. I get them from um, O'Brien Supply. So if y'all want to, and this is not sponsored by O'Brien Supplies. O'Brien Supply doesn't give me any kickback on advertising them, but I'm just sharing with y'all what I use or who I use. So if y'all want to check that stuff out, it's good, great quality, um, very affordable prices, and it's durable. This this collar and lead here, I've had this for about ten years. This leash here. And this collar, uh, yeah, probably about maybe eight years, somewhere in there. But um, I, and that's really not what I wanted to talk about. But um, I want to keep it moving. So when it comes down to you trying out this new equipment and you, you, you see these videos where you see all of the muscles on the dog, you see all of the benefits of using um, exercise equipment. Hey, that's fine and dandy, y'all. But let me be honest with y'all. There is a side of that stuff that you don't see. Muscle spasms. Um, um, it, it, and a lot of that stuff could ruin dogs. You could see a, um, a rise in hip dysplasia. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, just a plethora of things that could possibly go wrong when you work these dogs and you don't know what you're doing. Now, I'm no professional, but I know what I know and I know what works for this particular dog. Now, what works for this dog may not work for your dog, you know, but I will tell you, um, I posted a video a while back um, basically showing you how to um, teach your dogs how to do squats to build their um rear end and um so I, I i paid attention to a few videos and i just kind of checked out a few dogs and a lot of people don't realize that yeah you could mess your dog up by doing that and i can look at a dog and tell whether they're doing that or not because usually what will end up happening is the more they do that their hind quarters their their rear paws will start to splay out like that you know kind of slew footed looking slew pawed and that's a clear sign of hip dysplasia you're overworking them and you're not you know you're not doing it correctly this dog goes this is a vet dog this dog goes to the vet all the time um if i got a question anything like i'm that guy i'm kind of like that that customer the vet just cannot get away from <clears throat> any questions I have, I call them. Any concerns, I call them. You know, I don't just try to do things, you know, without making sure I'm doing it the correct way from a medical point of view. And then you also have to factor in, it's, it's almost like buying a, it's almost like buying a, um, a Ferrari, but you got a um, Chevrolet engine in it. You know what I mean? And I don't mean the Chevrolet like the um, the LSs. I mean like a, you know, Chevy Cavalier or something engine in the Ferrari. You know, it looks good on the outside, but on the inside, it is, it is just not making a cut. So you have to make sure these dogs are 
healthy inside and out. You know, because you can't just put a brand new souped up engine in a car without addressing the transmission and the drivetrain. You know, you, you, these are all this. This is all things. These are things that you have to factor in. So, a lot of times with this dog, y'all may see me doing weight pulls. Y'all may see me do a, just a plethora of things. And what y'all don't know that this dog, this dog only works out four days out the week. Any anything strenuous, she'll do it. She'll she'll do it four days out the week. And um, majority of the time. When we're off, we'll we'll do a lot of hand walking, a lot of um, just a lot of treadmill work. Nothing strenuous, nothing too too crazy, you know. So if you're gonna, if you know, some of you guys may be raising pups, you may be raising dogs now that you're trying to sit back and you're filming all of your everything that you have done thus far. But let me tell you, if you start them too soon, you'll ruin a dog. You start them too late, too heavy, you'll ruin a dog. And you have to, you got, you got to remain consistent, but at the same time, you got to keep in mind that these dogs are not robots. Okay. You can't expect them to be doing all of these different exercises and things, and they're not getting the proper um, nutrients. They're not getting the proper minerals. They're not getting the proper um, treatment or feed, you know? So you have to, it, it's more to it than what you see. This dog is on a um, supplement regimen. When it comes down to the minerals and everything that she lacks, at it, everything that she lacks, you know, I address all of these things. So when it comes down to me sculpting and and really trying to enhance the dog's physique, to me, it's it's man, it's it's a pleasure, it's a it's a pastime, and I enjoy it. But I just don't. I honestly feel like I don't need to go in half stepping you know what i'm saying some people just look at these videos and they automatically hey man where'd you get this they go get it and they try it without without even without a thought like hey well maybe i should make sure i should start out with a little lighter weight on the weight pool maybe i should start out um uh, with doing blood work to see what minerals and vitamins my dog may be lacking so that i could supplement that with feed you know there's a lot of variables to these things y'all and some people gonna do it right some people not gonna do it right you know just like with with puppies and stuff sit sit down sit down with puppies everybody want to breed everybody want to have that next you know want ever they want the fame they want all of the glitz and glamour behind i want to be that the, the best breeder in the world this that and the third everybody want that but truth be told you know, are you, are you, are you looking, looking through the dog? Like, are you looking through the dog's eyes? And what I mean, what I mean by looking through the dog's eyes, I mean, are you seriously considering how does consistently breeding affect my dog's health? How does, um, like, um, proper nutrition, like, are you factoring in all of these things or are you just breeding? Now I did see one channel and it, it's not even American Pitbull Terrier channel. Um, I think it's a band dog channel actually, where the guy goes in and he shows you the, you know, you know, there's no hip dysplasia in his dogs. That's those, when you see things like that, that right there clearly says that, Hey, you know, this person is on another level. This person is not trying to you know, just breed and sell dogs and don't care what he's pushing out. You know, he, he's actually paying attention to what's going on, what's coming in and out of his camp, you know, and those are the people you want to buy puppies from. Those are the people that you want to, you know, get advice from. Um, I don't breed dogs. I get a lot of questions about that, too. Um, I didn't get around to breeding her this time, given though that, you know, it's not cost effective right now. Um, but you know, in the near future, we will get it done this year. I'm I'm in no rush, for sure. I'm in no rush, and when and it, when she breathes, it'll probably just be once. You know, I I don't, I'm not, I don't get bent on you know breeding dogs or anything like that. That's just something I don't get bent on. But I do get bent on a dog being or operating at its fullest potential. You know, um, having all of the um, 
you know, exhibiting all of the traits that the family and, and you know, between one and four, the, the, the first and the fourth generation exhibited when they were this dog's age. And those things mean a lot to me. But um, like I said, y'all, if you're going to if you're going to exercise your dog, you're going to try to use this equipment. You're going to you're going to um, start new regimens with your dog. Just keep in mind that there are a lot of factors that you have to um, factor in when it comes down to doing all of these things. Just try to see things through the dog's eyes. OK, you know, you got to think if you was pulling the sled down the road at, you know, a quarter of your body weight. You got to think about how that feels. You know what I'm saying? Think about how that feels. So when you see things through the dog's eyes, you know, you you, you tend to do things a little different, you know. And, 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 and again, you know, it all boils down to um, just seeing things through the dog's eyes. You, I mean, when it comes down to like strenuous exercise, you have to make sure these dogs are getting proper stretches before and after exercises now these are things that you don't see on my channel because a lot of things a lot of times when i'm when i'm doing stretches with her and stuff like that it's hard to maneuver the camera and i don't have anybody back there all the time to kind of you know see everything i'm doing i will start incorporating that stuff but she does do stretches before and after every exercise um i administer massages after every spring pole workout you know we'll get a rub down for about 30 minutes or so somewhere in that 30 to 45 minutes um when i don't have to work the next day it's usually you know we usually go a little longer maybe like an hour or so that's it and um but that's 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 the message i want to spread and to the new subscribers you know you know this channel is is not just about the american pit bull terrier these these practices can be adopted for any breed of dog you know what I'm saying? As long as you're spending time with your dog, as long as you're working the dog, as long as you're giving the dog the life that it deserves, then you are a okay. You know, and if you ha it doesn't matter if you have a dog from a kennel, it doesn't matter if you have a dog you found on the street or a rescue dog. All dogs need the same amount of not well not the same amount of attention, but they all need attention and they all want a better life for themselves. And you know in turn they'll give you a better life also so you may hear some people say that their dogs will enhance the quality of your life this that and the third all dogs will enhance the quality of anybody's life it depends on the person it depends on how much time the person takes out it depends on you know what 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 the person is investing so if you're not investing anything into the dog you're not going to get any returns so with that being said y'all remember to like share comment subscribe Thank y'all for tuning into the channel. I am your host, Trial and Error, and y'all stay tuned. We will be back later on this week.